such a big part of the problem with the words mindfulness and emotional intelligence is they seem so not relatable to people. They seem so distant, the words themselves. So I spend a lot of time trying to reframe these words so they're relatable and applicable and understandable. And so I found a way, Ted, that I think really captures what gets in the way of emotional intelligence. Because a lot of people, when they think of emotional intelligence, they think of conflict and anger and frustration. And that's what they go to. Like, I'm mad and I got to respond and not react, which is true. I mean, this is a huge aspect of emotional intelligence. But the way I say it is, when do you become rattled? And my definition of rattled is, you have a change of mood, you have a change in energy level, you have a change in emotion. And one of the examples I give is you're sitting at your desk and you read an email and it's bad news. Can you feel your whole body be like, oh, you're rattled because it distracted you in that moment. You were having a good day. You were being productive. You were going along and all of a sudden this email comes and now you're rattled. And so it's very important when we talk about emotional intelligence for people to understand it's not just not being angry. It's recognizing when your mood, emotion, or energy has subtle changes in it, and then the consequences of those subtle changes. So when you recognize that change of emotion, mood, and energy, what do you have to distract yourself from going down the bad path? 